Good evening, and welcome potentially to Sentinels Live. We will see if this is going out live. If so, let me know in the chat. They've got adverts. Excellent. All right, so at the moment, it is just me, uh, your Scottish friend, Canadian in Scotland, that is. Uh, Jeremy will be joining us soon, but I feel naked and alone until then. He is supposedly in an Uber. Uh, so while we're waiting for Jeremy, I'd be happy to take some questions from the chat. Um, as you may know, uh, we launched a Kickstarter this week. I will throw the link into the chat room for you guys. And I can probably figure out how to show that on the screen, but that would be too complicated. I'm sure you can figure it out by clicking the link, go to Kickstarter and check it out. We are right now at $37,727, almost halfway. Maybe we can get it over halfway during the stream tonight. That would be pretty sweet. I am not naked. That is not, that is not what I said. Actually, that is what I said. <laughs> um, let's see. Uh, when are we going to see the Prime Warden promos? Uh, at some point. Uh, no schedule at this time. Uh, someone has a question, but they can't think of it. Too bad. Are you surprised how well... Oh, I have to say this one for Evil Dice Monkey. Question. Are you surprised how well the Kickstarter is going? Wait, is that Irish or is that Scottish? I'm bad at accents. I should, probably shouldn't try accents. Uh, it was probably New Zealand. You never know, right? Uh, we're, we're pretty well pleased with the Kickstarter. It's uh, been going quite nicely. I think uh, we'll be rolling over to, uh, to more, more money soon. More Welsh. I'll just, I'll just keep, I'll just, my, I'll just keep going. Maybe it'll, maybe it'll go into a bit of a Russian accent. Maybe something else. Maybe, maybe. I'll just talk randomly. Yeah. So the Kickstarter, we're pretty pleased with the launch. Uh, we've got over a thousand backers, which is pretty awesome. Uh, over two hundred mobile backers. It's creeping up towards three hundred now, actually. Uh, and we're pretty pleased that people are participating, and uh, and pretty psyched about season two uh there's tons of stuff in it and we are really actually excited uh you know that getting to the goal is sort of the first step and then there's going to be stretch goals and bonuses and stuff like that that we are really uh, looking forward to telling you guys about and getting to because there's lots of stuff that's um really cool that you know people have been asking for uh as well as stuff that we think you are gonna like let's see what else we got in the chat room here? Technically, I did say I feel naked. So there you go. We'll, we'll get an instant replay on that later. I should do a different, different accent every week. That's true. I've probably been losing my Canadian accent, though everyone that I meet will know I'm Canadian uh, because I sound different than them. Uh, what is Baron Blade doing on the stream? He's not on the stream, is he? I guess he's, on, he's, he's there like a little picture in the corner. Uh, I, if I click pledge now, does that does that show it? Oh yeah, I get the little steam thing. There, I can show the Kickstarter without actually... See, see I'm, it's past midnight here. Uh, I can do this without having to do funny things with my streaming software. So there it is, the Kickstarter right now. Uh, is there going to be a tier for someone who wants the game on mobile and on Steam? Uh, there's not going to be a separate tier, but you can just back at the regular $25 tier for the Steam key and then add on to it. So if you look in the campaign page, there's a list of add-ons. Uh, if you add $5 and one cent, uh, it will count towards the mobile tier. Uh, and so um, how that works is um, what we want to do is basically get mobile players to be participating, um, and but there's no there's no actual way that we can deliver the season pass, which is just a technical legal 
mumbo jumbo um, just makes our lives difficult, but we have to deal with it. So the whole the the deal is basically if we get mobile backers to back, uh, we'll get a discount going uh, with the launch of season two. So essentially, you you can back for five dollars, and then it'll be five dollars off. So it's a wash, but you also get the bonuses and stretch goals. You know, help help make it happen. That's the main thing. Uh, Lou Dolphin is surprised that I'm Canadian. Uh, you're welcome. Can you describe a bit how Kickstarters work? Uh, sure. Uh, that is a good question. Uh, and actually, it's something that people, uh, we actually get a bit of confusion about all the time. So Kickstarter is a crowdfunding website uh, where anyone can start a project. I'm getting a phone call. Hello, you're live on the air. Hello, long time watcher, first time caller. Uh, great. Great to hear. Love- Great to hear. Nice to have you on the show. Uh, I love your what's, show. What's your question? Uh, my question is: Will the collector's card fil- fit in a sleeved ultimate collector's case? How many levels of sleeves are you looking to, to get in there? I don't know. At least six oh, or seven. Six or seven. Uh, I think only if you lube it up. Make sure to get a good grease on. Nice. All right, I apologize everybody for my lateness. Also don't type so loud. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah, I was trying to get the chat opened up so I can at least read. Yes. Um, I'm sure John prefaced it for everybody, but um, I'm in Boston and I was actually trying to get everything I needed to make sure that we could do what we needed to do. And I completely lost track of the time. Color, can you turn down your radio, please? <laughs> oh, <laughs> I get it. That's awesome. Uh, so actually, I was just answering a question uh, about how Kickstarters work. Do you want to continue answering that question? Um, I, I'll, if, you get yourself set up. I'll continue answering the question. Okay. <laughs> I don't know what the question is. so I uh, It was just how does Kickstarter work? So, um, so anyone can start a project on Kickstarter. Uh, famously, there was a project where someone wanted to make potato salad, uh, and they asked uh, for $20.00. To make some potato salad, and they raised something like a hundred thousand dollars to make potato salad. Um, but but generally, how it works is you you know you want you have a project and you want to do a certain thing, and you you know you figured how much it's going to cost to do it, um, how much it's going to cost to say ship out any rewards and so on, and you put a number in. And in our case, it uh, was eighty thousand uh, dollars based on our estimates and stuff. Uh, you know how much it's going to take for us to build season pass two. Um, and so we put that out there with all the description and the um, video and everything. And then every, every anyone can go on there and uh, I'm not sure if the technical term is donate, but you can uh, put money forward to the campaign or you can pledge a certain amount of money. Uh, and so, you know, in our campaign, the typical amount is $25. And but there's different other levels you can pledge at and get different things. Um, and so how it works in general is if enough people pledge so that uh, the total gets to $80,000, then it will be funded. Um, for you individually, when you pledge, you don't get charged right away. Uh, basically, it's a promise. And you, you, so you don't actually put any payment forward. It only charges your credit card uh, if the campaign succeeds, and then it'll be at the end of the campaign. Uh, so it's always safe to pledge on a Kickstarter you're not going to lose your money. You're not going to, um, you know, your money's going to, not going to get taken uh, for nothing because, you know, if the campaign failed, then uh, your money, would, your credit card wouldn't be charged at all. Uh, so there's not even a question of a refund or anything like that. Um, so it works out really well because the creators of the project can be sure that they, you know, they'll either get the money they need to make what they need to make, uh, or they won't. Um, and for us. Uh, you know, we had season one before, and uh, we we basically took on the risk of that. You know, we we put that out there, and um, you know, essentially took on the risk of we would need to get uh, enough sales of that to continue making the content. So luckily, that happened. Uh, with and actually, season- I'll jump in real yeah. quick and just say, you know, just for the, you know, we we tend to be pretty 
transparent with our community. We you know we trust you guys. Mm-hmm. We you know we make a thing that we make, and I'll I'll be completely honest with you. You know, one of the reasons why we're doing Kickstarter for this is because um, doing season one the way that we did. Um, there was actually a month that I didn't take a salary <laughs> because, you know, we were still working on something and we hadn't finished sales and, and whatever. So, you know, some people, I think, have a wrong impression of Kickstarter, especially with a company like us, where it's like they're selling a game, they're selling a season pass, it's making money. Clearly, they're doing fine. Why do they need Kickstarter? And and the, the simple answer is because we're not a big company. We're a small company. And while Sentinels does sell pretty well, given what it is and, and, you know, the potential size of the market. Um, you know, it's not Fallout 4. It's not Halo 5. You know, we don't make millions of dollars. Yeah. And um, Well, and even those so, companies aren't in necessarily a situation where they can do anything they want. Exactly, you know? exactly. That's just not and, how business works. I, right. whenever because I see, we, you know, we, we came to the Sentinels Project as fans. You know, we, we decided we wanted to turn this into a video game because we liked the property as fans. And so, you know... We come to it from that, you know. Yes, there's a part of me that's like, I think we can make money making this game. But the reason why we started with this game and not some other game is because of how much we believe in the property, how much we like the property itself. And when you couple that with, you know, the, this idea of like, how, you know, where do we take on the risk? Where do we whatever? That's how we. That's what led us to the idea of using a Kickstarter. You know, we've sold a game. We've got a lot of people who like it, and we thought. If these people want to see the game finish in the same way that we do, let's work together to make that happen and let's, you know, put it up on Kickstarter and see, you know, if it's a financially viable thing to, to do it without hopefully the risk of me not mm-hmm. being able to take a salary. Well, yeah, and I mean, the, the sort of the, the proposition is really the same as Season Pass 1 uh, from your guys' perspective and from ours with an even, with, it's even better because basically, like, you know, you're putting your money forward on a you know, on a good faith basis that we will do the thing and, you know, we're collecting that money and promising that we're going to do it. And the difference here is that, you know, we don't, we aren't going to be beholden to do something that we might not be able to do. And you won't be putting your money forward to something that there's a chance won't get done. It just adds a whole lot of certainty to the whole thing. Right. Uh, which I think is really great. I've, I'm always flabbergasted when people are like, why was Kickstarter? It makes no sense. It's like it makes the most sense of anything. <laughs> it's what Kickstarter yeah, and, is and for. Actually, <laughs> just to sort of put, put a pin on the final little piece of this, um, the reason why I didn't take a salary that month was because I wanted, I didn't want us to get in a situation where, you know, okay, we've already pre-sold all of these expansions and things are selling a little slower than we would have liked. There was a very real chance that, you know, if I would have had to either choose between me or Jennifer, for instance, taking a salary, I wanted Jennifer not only to keep her job, but to be able to continue building the content that we had already sold as part of season one. And so the choices were default on that promise or me tighten my belt for a month. Um, and, you know, as CEO, that's what I that's you know what I signed up for. So it wasn't really a whole lot of discussion that it was going to be what happened. But, you know, I just wanted people to to sort of understand a little bit more about how that whole thing works. Like, you know, even greater than games, after raising a million and a half dollars, they're not rolling on a bed of money. That money is going to something. Um, yeah, you that, know, mo- it's that money is turning into cardboard. Exactly, exactly. And in our tur- in our, in us, obviously, it's turning into electrons and bits, um, which will hopefully then also be transmuted into the enjoyment of people on the other end. <laughs> so that's good stuff. All right. All right, so enough of how the sausage is made. Playing some Sentinels. Exactly. Let's play this game that we keep uh, I guess claim this, to like so much. must be going fine because no one's complaining about things. So that's good. Or maybe they can't hear us. That's possible too. Oh no! They t- they're talking about rolling in a bed of cardboard. Is this you, Mystery Comics? Uh, nope. Well, we're on we're on the public server. <laughs> oh, okay. Uh, so I'll make a custom private game and tell you what it is, and maybe someone will join us if they're lucky. Ra God of the Sun 101. I apologize if my typing is loud. Who are we playing? Just press random. Ooh, Omnitron X. I was playing some Omnitron X on the plane today. We want to wait for anyone to come into the game who heard us say what the name of the room is, or just get going. Yeah, I think we should get going. Okay. We'll play with some people. I noticed our player markers are underneath 
Oh, my, my name is gone. I must have reset things. You want to pick another hero? Yeah, I'm looking at it's who I want to pick. the same color. It's going to be annoying. Oh, well. <laughs> Close enough. Too late. No one got to join the game. <laughs> oh, Kagra. Excellent. All right, I don't have to see what's happening here. You're the one who's streaming. That's right. Uh, do whatever I want. So yeah, so did you want to do your spiel? Oh, sure. Um, let's see if I can do it from memory so I don't have to load it up. Welcome to Sentinels Live. Thank you for joining us around the digital tabletop while we play Sentinels of the Multiverse. What do I usually say after that? <laughs> um, Sentinels is available on iOS, Android, and Steam. And um, <laughs> yeah, streams you usually last for an hour to two hours. <laughs> Sometimes, depending on how long it takes for us to play, we maybe play more than one game in a stream. Uh, but obviously the most important thing is that we're running a Kickstarter now for Season 2 content. Uh, so please tell your friends, go back it. Um, we're very excited to get the rest of the multiverse out to you guys. Um, that's good enough. Yeah, you're usually pretty good about your lines. Yeah, so well, I usually am reading it right off of the screen. That's true. <laughs> uh, awesome. So, yeah, so uh, last week wrapped up the last of the Wrath of the Cosmos previews, uh, I think. I guess we didn't play Heroic Infinitor on the stream, did we? We did not. Do you want to back out and do that? No, let's do that for the second game. Okay. Uh, but, um, yeah, so Cargo Warfang, we've only played once, so I'll give a quick once over what she does since it's fairly complicated. Um, so she's got an arena, the Bloodsworn Coliseum. Uh, on her front side here, you can see that she's actually not a target. Uh, you can't attack her, kind of like misinformation. Um, she plays a gladiator at the start, and she's going to flip over if there's no gladiators at the end of the villain, at the start of the villain turn. She also plays extra cards. Uh, she's basically all about getting her gladiators out. Um, the Bloodsworn Coliseum uh, has a title deck. Uh, and these cards come out and can be added onto different uh, targets, heroes, villains. Uh, all, all different kinds of things can happen, so I'll explain those when they come up. Um, and how you win the game in this situation is you can't actually win by, def by just killing the villain. Uh, that just doesn't work. You have to get enough favor, the favor of the crowd. You have to win uh, their hearts and minds and other organs because they're aliens. Um, so they're all making fun of me because I forgot my lines. I apologize, people. <laughs> As I mentioned, I am not in my usual element. Um, I'm actually, I was actually in a room with two-thirds, or I guess five-sixths of Greater Than Games, um, because they're here in Boston with me for PAX, but um, I realized at the last minute I literally hopped an Uber and came running into the hotel to get up here to arrive by. Jeremy like, forgot about you, that's what he's saying. Daddy forgot. <laughs> I, I kind of did. <laughs> I know. Like like John texted me at like 15 minutes out. He's like, so did you check your internet connection? Is it going to work for the stream? And I, I wrote back, right. So about that. <laughs> I completely forgot that that was a thing because we yeah. walked all over Boston. Uh, yeah. So, uh, so yeah. So the heroes need to get crowd their favor to win. Um, and the, the villain also needs to get favor to win. But, of course, the villain can also win by just defeating you. Um, because it's not fair, because it doesn't have to be fair. Uh, Richard has a question, how does the background noise for the Coliseum work? Um, there's a, so that's something that Jean-Marc would be happy to talk about, but I can mention it. Let me get into the game first, and then I'll talk about that. Sure. Oh, so we have Odessa the Adroit. I didn't go through the hands yet. Let me do that quick. After we get to a decision here. Uh, so a Gladiator came out, and Stonejaw, a title, came out. That's going to go on top of the into the next target that comes into play, which looks like it's not, not going to be a gladiator because Fickle Fans has come out. Okay, so let's quickly take a look at Legacy. She's got Bolster Allies, Heroic Interception, Motivational Charge, and Thok. I always like it when Thok is like at the end of the sentence like that. <laughs> Omnitronics has Disruptive Flechettes, Electro Deployment Unit, Reset, and Technological Advancement. Lots of stuff to start looking for his cards, its cards. Uh, Chrono Ranger has a displaced armory, I am the prize, Jim's hat, and a neurotoxic dart, toxin dart thrower, aka a stunbolt. Uh, Tachyon's got a lightspeed barrage, nimble strike, sucker punch, and supersonic response. 
Yeah, so listen in the crowd for Estelendis, because she's in there. That Irish accent comes through. <laughs> uh, so right. speaking of favor, the card that is up now mm. is, is Fickle Fans, and this is a card that can swing the favor of the crowd. Um, it basically takes four from, well, it takes an H number, so in this case we're playing a four hero game. So it takes four tokens from the favor pool that has the most and gives it to the favor pool with the least. Um, except in this case, where if they're equal, which it is at zero, zero, but it can be at any point in the game. As long as they're equal, it just has everybody deal themselves uh, one psychic damage. And that's going to happen. Yeah. Um, I just turned up the effects a little bit so you can hear the crowd better. If anyone has trouble hearing Jeremy because of that, let me know. Um, so the crowd actually has a, like a basic loop that's like two or three minutes long. Uh, and that plays over top of the music. Um, sort of general crowd noise. Oh, Kargra has entered the arena! And she's got Stone Jaw. That's the worst. Yeah. Damage dealt to her is reduced by one. So I, I just heard, have you ever seen such a battle? <laughs> uh, yeah, so, so whenever she enters the arena, there's a special effect uh, where the crowd chants her name. Um, the, there's different chant... Uh, different crowd uh, reactions for different things that can happen, and then there's voices uh, that are, and all these all these sounds are provided uh, by fans who sent sent them in. So you can see when the when they're getting favor, um, there's an effect that's happening where the crowd is uh, cheering cheering for the Bloodsworn, and there's ones where the, the crowd's cheering for the heroes. Um, so the random ones that happen are. Uh, individual to, e to each game because, you know, I'm not sitting in the same place in the Coliseum that Jeremy is, so I'm hearing different people in different spots. Okay. I should play a card. What are we doing? We're trying not to lose. So Okay, so I, was I want to answer Sockfoot real quick. So there is no YouTube video with you guys playing Deadline. There is, if you go to the Wrath of the Cosmos playlist, um, playlist it's like the second or third item in it because that was actually hosted it was another week where i was traveling and it was actually hosted by someone who was not our um was not on our channel on twitch and so when it exported it went to their youtube channel so it's in the the playlist it just wasn't hosted on our actual channel um so you can see it there and i'm sure we will play deadline again but you are right um we have not yet played as john was saying we haven't played heroic infinitor yet on the stream so we will try to maybe get to that in a second game tonight All right, so All right. got motiv motivational charge. Healing isn't really super important in this fight, but it can't hurt. Yeah. So I've got my disruptive flechettes, which under with, against lots of villains is really fantastic, but against Kargra is essentially useless. <laughs> well, it's two damage because to every target. That's it favorite. is two damage. Yes, I just I, this is one of those cards that I like to sit on and really just drop the hammer with, with lots of targets in play, and you know, like Iron Legacy. This is one of those cards I like to have against an Iron Legacy because he comes out with those four ongoings right up front. Um, it's a good way to sort of keep the battle from getting out of hand too quickly. Um, and another thing that I typically do with Omnitron is I almost always, if I have reset, I almost always play it. Um, just to give myself a few more options. Um, but let's see what else one I've got here. Option. I've got my... What's that? One more option. One more option, right. So I've got my Electro Deployment Unit. Uh, draw a card or play a card. That's a really excellent one, too. Uh, Technological yeah, so Advancement. Sam Samwise is actually in the chat at Zach, uh, who hosted the video that time. So he's posting a link in. Oh, wonderful. Yeah. yeah, Adjacent Hex is the name of the channel, I believe. No, Another Letdown CF. Another Letdown. Uh, he's got many names. Yes. Um, you'll see him at PAX East, actually. Oh, nice. Excellent. I tried to steal his volunteering from Craig, but Craig was like, no, Zach is mine. <laughs> ah. All right. So actually, I think I'm going to go ahead and put out Technological Advancement so I can get... Um, Let's see, who what kind of damage is being done? Energy, lightning, melee. Mm -hmm. I think I'm going to put out my elemental exo chassis. Kind of bad play. Just to keep that, because again, you know, uh, we actually didn't talk about this. So one of the, sp let's talk about the specific ways that you gain or lose, fa well, not lose favor, but gain favor. Basically, whenever. Um, a hero or a villain deals two or more damage at once to multiple 
uh, non-villain or non-hero targets. Um, and so if like if you've got one of these gladiators who does two damage to like two heroes, and I can stop it from doing the damage to Omnitron, that will save the, us from having them get some additional favor. Uh, similarly, if you if they deal four or more damage at once, if I can reduce that by two, wonderful. Now it's only two, and they're not going to get favor from that. So yeah, so there's a lot of a lot of reasons why having Omnitron sort of break up some of the damage can be can be helpful. All right, so let's time shift. So this game um, actually has two. Like I always love time shifting Tachyon. I always love time shifting Chrono Ranger because, like, yeah, especially think, Chrono Ranger, there's it's always something you want. Almost yeah, up. Yeah, like, I think that's exactly what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna go ahead and time shift Chrono Ranger, and you get sudden contract. Yeah, with like with Tachyon, it's it's pretty good, but sometimes you get like an early light speed barrage, and you're like, oh, but mm -hmm. but yeah, like this is beautiful. Like by any means, on card warfaring, yes, that's happening. So Evil Dice Monkey asks, do people favor playing multiple resets in a single turn? I've had actually several games in the last few days where I've played three resets in a row. <laughs> and did you get the title Chaos Lord? Um, in one of the, in one I did, yes. <laughs> in one game I did get that. So one one interesting thing to note, if you do have multiple if you do have res multiple resets, if you play more than one of them in a row, like in the same chain, you will lose them into your trash. So you have to, you might not want to do that. So someone was asking, why was Card Rule Warfang listed twice in the which deck do you want to play the top card of? And then somebody answered them that it is the title deck. Um, oh, that is, is that considered to be its own deck. It should have said the title deck. But yes, it does. It actually, yes, I did notice that. It says Card Rule Warfang, and then it says Card Rule Warfang. Okay, that's a bug. Okay. Uh, yes, guys has been causing trouble, just so you know. All right. Play a card. Jim's hat. Yes, and maybe I'll see if I can get another bounty if I play Eye in the Prize. Kill on sight. I also like kill on sight, but I think I want to get a weapon of mass destruction, or of pinpoint destruction. Because we need to keep hitting Cargo Warfang. Because, and this is important to anyone who would like to report a bug to me, uh, if you get more than 20 favor and you're wondering why you're not winning, please look at Cargo Warfang's flip side. In bold, it states, Jeremy. The heroes cannot win the game. Exactly. So you need to destroy Cargo Warfang and get her to flip over before you can win. And you can lose on this side. So it is dangerous to have her in the arena. And I will say that has actually become a nice, fun little metagame that people have been tweeting at us, seeing how high they can get to hero favor mm -hmm. and still not having won. I think the highest I've seen so far was like 38. I'm sure it can go much higher. Oh, I think yeah, people have been like 66 and stuff. I had yeah. a game where I got to 41 and got her down to one hit point, And then they got enough favor in one. It was very close. All right, I'm going to make a bug report for that, because I didn't while well, you take your turn. Yeah. All right, so I think, let's see, Super Scientific Tachyon has been dealt damage by Super Scientific Tachyon, Odessa the Adroit, and Dimkarn the Fearless. Uh, Odessa the Adroit is at 9, and Dimkarn is at 10. And actually, yeah, she does extra tokens, so I'm going to go after her first. Title deck listed incorrectly in select a deck decisions. Also, player markers drawn below game setup cards. Notice that too. If it's not one thing, it's another. All right, so are you done making that card? Yes. All right, so Napikaros wants to know, if it hasn't already been asked, I have a question about the living weapon. I noticed Argent Adept actually got the title once using Vocalize on Sherzo of Frost and Flame. Can he get living weapon if he uses Vocalize to use the harp to use the Lyra to deal damage and kill a target? Um, let me look at living weapon. Oh, how convenient. There it is. When a hero destroys a target using their innate power, um, the Argent Adept should not be able to get that title. Um, that would be a bug. So if that happens, please report it. 
So basically what you're saying is that the, the inherent power must deal damage itself, not... Well, deal damage or destroy a target. Or destroy a target, right, right. Okay. Yeah, like, it can't be the card that Omnitron X puts into play, right? Or... Oh, right, okay. There's something yeah, okay. else that does something else. It has to be the power needs to do it. Uh, let's give this to Chrono Ranger because Omnitron X is going to take other damage. Um, so they ask, is the story? Is there a story reason why Cargo never is never really defeated, but can come out in battle multiple times? Um, I think it's basically because she never lets herself get defeated. If she gets, you know, her for her getting down to zero hit points, basically means that she's like, all right, I'm sick of you people. I'm going back to my chair. Yeah. I don't think she can be defeated. Yeah. She's just that badass. All right. We have a pterodactyl thief. Um, that is potentially annoying. Yeah, Omnitron's got one and Chrono Ranger's got two equipments out. I think we have, well, between, we have Tachyon with hypersonic and disruptor flechettes. That's three area damage. Um, and then you could suck. Then you could sucker punch him. Oh, you can't. You can't play two cards yet. Nope. All right, I'll fuck it. Because let's just get rid of it. I don't have yeah, anything so to play. As Delinus points out, a really good point, which is that being reduced to zero hit points in this game so doesn't first. typically actually represent death. It just represents, like with the heroes, it represents being incapacitated, um, and many right. times with villains you can be reduced to hero hit points and all that does is trigger them to flip over it's really it's not so it's it's not really health in, yeah. in the traditional sense it's just it's hit you know, points a stand not health points it's hit points exactly actually I'm not sure if it's referred to anything besides HP in the rules alright so I think I'm going to reset first just to see I get another electro deployment unit. And then it sounded like we were pretty excited about the disruptive flechettes idea. Does that sound about right? Uh, as long as three damage gets dealt to Pterodactyl Thief, I don't care how it gets done. <laughs> I think it would be really good for Tachyon to play super hypersonic assault, generally, though. Because, um, and that will do the last one because we're taking a bunch of damage and they're getting a lot of favor on their turns. Yep. All right, I think this time I'm actually going to... I'm gonna time shift Tachyon. Ooh, I like it. So let's see. Uh, so the answer to Pycross why the Argent Adept's power would not count is just as I explained, uh, like, when the super scientific tachyon reveals two cards and plays those, those don't count. That's not the power doing the thing that it's the cards doing the thing. Uh, it's just, you can't extend it to anything. Otherwise, basically anything could happen and then they would get the power or they would get the title. I mean, I, it, to be fair, I understand the thought that, you know, yeah, but I mean, if that if that was how it works, then it would apply to any power that causes any other thing to happen. Well, right? and what, to finish what I was saying, I can understand why the argument could be made that the Argent Adept is a little bit different because his powers are all about, make, you know, performing songs, which is a thing that's only to him. But that's just not the way it works. <laughs> all right, so. We actually have the living weapon available, so Chron Chrono Ranger is going to kill, I think, that um, Pterodactyl Thief with his base power. We also have Chaos Lord available, which will go to a player who plays three cards in one turn, which could also be Chrono Ranger if I'm lucky, so I'm going to try that.
but I need to do I need to destroy it with my innate power as we've been discussing oh look I will get to uh, oh I, I put an equipment card into play that won't count is that what I want to so do actually I want to kill on site that pterodactyl thief go ahead Jeremy uh, there's just a question does skyscraper changing form mid power cause the power to stop and I'm trying to think of uh, maybe uh, remember with dynamic siphon anything can happen oh I have Jim's hat of course I can play three cards um, I'm not sure we'll have to check it out uh, I imagine it should stop because her card is no longer um, active uh, so Jeremy if you're wondering like she could draw a card, and Omnitron could try to hit her, and that goes to his dynamic siphon instead because of whatever. Or she could play a link that causes her, like, basically, something something makes dynamic siphon activate. Mm -hmm. Anything can happen at all. That's why Captain Cosmic is weird. <laughs> uh, do I want an equipment card? Sure, I, uh, I'll put it the Toxic Dark Thrower. And I get a title, so we get a favor. Yeah, there are all sorts of ways that she could change card mid-power because of Dynamic Siphon. Alright, I'm going to destroy the Pterodactyl Thief. I get the living weapon. We get a new title because the target was destroyed. And I get to draw three cards. Pretty effective turn. For Chrono Ranger. Hey, hot dog here. I need a hot dog. Hot dog. <laughs> I got all the bounties. Yes. Uh, Wakuki, I saw your question and I answered it. We will look into it. All right, Tachyon. Yes, so we've already gotten rid of the other one, but I think that um, Hypersonic is probably still a good choice. It's not going to help against Cargra because she's got that reduction. Nope, she has by any means on her, so you'll, it'll get through. Oh, she has by any means on her. Yeah. There you go. That's why she's down to 28. <laughs> That champion title is pretty tough to get. Destroy three targets in one turn. You basically have to be like Haka. So I'm going to experiment. I'm oh, not sure look at this. There's a question about the lyrics for the Bloodsworn. I'm not sure what the question, what that means. Can you, the Mario Fanatic, can you explain your question better? It's not a song, so it doesn't have lyrics. Is he maybe asking about like le releasing the the loop sort of put into a song? I I have no. That's why I want to know. Want yeah. clarification. The mind breaker. All right. A target. If a target is dealt damage by four different t sources, we don't want cargo warfing to get this. So we have to watch out for that. Oh, so he says, would you be willing to release the script of all the lines actually in use? Um, yeah, we could probably do that. I, I don't it's know. It's not actually a script. Like, yeah, it's not. It's not a script. I mean, we would basically just sort of transcribe all the different sounds that were submitted, uh, because it's sort of generated randomly. But um, yeah, we could probably do that at some point. No yeah, promise. I don't on the think timeline. we're gonna take our focus off. That'll be our. That'll that, be our but... one point five million dollar stretch goal. Perfect. Done. All right, we have a bloodsworn judgment. We almost destroy an ongoing or equipment card. Someone just burped. Did you submit that one, Jeremy? I did not. Oh, I'll destroy one of my good things. I guess I'll destroy this dark throw I didn't really want. Death cover. This is good for Tachyon. Oh, but she gets it because 
was from Bloodborne Judgment. There's a question about plans for dealing with something in a future deck. Uh, that is something we deal with when we get there. Yeah, John actually said something to me today <laughs> about thinking about things in the future, which I thought was just brilliant. He said, yeah, we'll cross that bridge when we find out how much fire it is on. <laughs> <laughs> I was wondering if you liked that. You didn't reply right away. so <laughs> I did like that a lot, yes. So that is, that's your answer, Wakugi there. Wakuki, excuse me, is that when we get to that, we'll see how big of a fire it is, and then we'll decide if we're going to cross that bridge. Uh, Evil Dice Monkey asks a note about fireside chat rulings. Uh, we have been preparing them, and they're awaiting approval. So they should be out at some point. Uh, it won't happen this week because Christopher's with me in Boston. Yeah. All right. I can't deal damage, so I'm going to play Heroic Interception. And skip. If Freedom 6 Bunker destroys a hero, hero ongoing card while Imbued Vitality is in play, uh, and it's gaining the title of Living Weapon, yep, does it have an effect on the name power? It increases the damage it deals by 2. That is the effect it has. Good luck with that. Alright. Um, <laughs> I could disrupt the flechettes again. You know what, I'm actually, oh, there's the burp, I just heard it. <laughs> actually, I think what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to get out my electric deployment unit so I can start doing some more interesting things next turn, and I am going to... Hopefully it doesn't go away. Time, yeah, I'm going to time actually, shift... Actually, you're using damage, so it should, be, it should be fine. What have you got in play, Chrono Ranger? Do you need to be time shifted? And actually, yeah, you know, that's fine. I'm, I'm, if you want it, I'll bet you can have it, because Tachyon's kind of got herself under control, I think. If you think something is poorly designed, you should talk to Christopher. And maybe put it more politely. Uh, I like Terrible Tech, tech Strike in play. I would like to punch Cargo Warfang terribly. Yeah, so just uh, to talk a little bit more strategy there, you know, that was a scenario where, given the, the um, damage situation, he could have tried to do two different targets, two different damage, but it would not have worked because um, she was being boosted by one and reduced by one at the same time. So if he tried to hit her with the one, it would have only been one. So if he tried to go for favor there, it would have not worked out. So in the absence of gaining more favor, if... Cargra is still on her target side. Get her the heck out of there as fast as possible. Yeah, because you can't win. Well, that that card lets me hit a different target, right? Yeah. So I could have I could have hit two targets. I could have got a favor point on my turn there. Well, but on that it was two for the first one, which you used against her to deal two damage. The second one is only one. So yeah, but there's you had an obsidian field. Boosting. Oh, there's an obsidian field out. That's right. I was going by the by any means that was on her. That's right. Yeah, so you could have gotten favor there. Yeah, but I wanted to deal more damage to her, so. Yeah. And to that point, I think I'm going to play the ultimate target. On target warfing. And... So the whole gang is nice because there's the death color thing. Um, are you thinking of sucker punching something? Um, to get death collar? I mean, it's really nice for Chrono Ranger to have it. <laughs> but say again, what what you're asking me to do? Or asking so, me if I'm where you to plan do? to try to get death collar on your turn? I had no plans. Okay. Um. Okay. I can play another card. I think I'm gonna play. Get your t-shirts here. I'm going to play Displaced Armory, and I think I'm going to... Because I have two bounties in play, right? Um, so I'm going to get... 
Um, Danny boy. I have like an embarrassment of powers to use. Yeah, Sonic Blade. I was too. I just popped that open. I was like, I'm pretty sure Death Caller is not available, and it's not. I think you're oh, thinking of mine. Oh, it went on to her. I keep, I keep, kept thinking that it was available because I saw it. But yeah, it got put onto her. All right, then I'm just gonna blow her up. Uh, this is gonna do more damage overall than my innate power. So, and get some piles of favor points for us. So. I think I'm gonna hit Orim because, or not Orim. Yeah, this guy adds tokens to the Bloodsworn pool. He's annoying. Mm -hmm. Based on environment cards in play, right? Yeah. And there's one there that we want to keep, so we should kill him. All right. So also, I get... let me just check the Mind Breaker here. Okay, she's been only dealt damage by one source, so just Chrono Ranger, I guess. Get out my goggles, and I think I'm just going to nimble strike. If I'm just going to nimble strike, should I go after Orem to keep moving towards trying to get... I mean, tokens are going to come out this turn, no matter what? Or should I just keep trying to wail on Cargra? Um, My two damage. Yeah, I would just hit Cargra. Okay. Okay, that's an epic interruption, and now I am going to experiment uh, on myself. Oh, love it! Accelerated Assault. Oh, wait. I don't want to Accelerated Assault. Why not? Because once I hit Durkarn, I can't then hit Durkarn again with Hypersonic. Oh, yeah, you should do the other one first. Yeah, I should do the other one first. So let's go back and do that. So we'll do Tachyon. And we'll Hypersonic first. Look that at this way, Jeremy dark. strategizing. Yeah, I'm learning. Yeah, woo! Yeah, that Dirk arm bit me a couple times, so that's why I know that one. Is I like I was like, wait a minute, what? I don't understand. He literally bit me. Yeah, Dark Roy Dante says, I thought it was a bug when I played yesterday. It never once occurred to my group that Omnitron X could play the title deck. Mm -hmm. um, and yeah, and actually, Super Scientific Tachyon can also experiment on the title deck. Yep. Which, if, you, if, you, if there's no titles out, and you're like, I really want two titles out, you can experiment, and you'll be guaranteed to have both of them come oh, out. I was hoping the Raptor might get a title for something. He, he destroyed uh, that guy who bit you. The Seeker! I love the Seeker. I want Chrono Ranger to have it. None of us have damage reduction, right? We might be we might be able to get it. So Mario Fanatic says to Dark Roy Dante, it makes me wonder when Oblivion comes out, will he be able to play from any deck in play, or would it have to be one that's in the same area? It's a good question. At least from the from what was in the Kickstarter, I believe it said something about having to be, like, you can only de affect things that are in the same zone as you. I think. Right, but the question is, don't, like, for instance, isn't, like, the Scion deck and the Aeon Man deck, don't those sort of exist in that in, in the oh, middle right, in, like, the, section? the middle deck place? Yeah. I imagine, yeah. I mean, I don't know. Yeah, and, we don't really And know it could all yet. change anything that I think I know could change tomorrow, so... Yes, we were actually explicitly told by Paul from Greater Than Games, um... Whatever you are planning, be prepared for the fact that it is in playtesting and it may completely change. So, yeah. So, what do we think about Chrono Ranger getting the Seeker, or would we rather someone else get it? Because basically anyone can get it, because it's, we can easily hit Kargra or 
the Endolin or any, you know, we can easily get it. So, who wants it? It's nice to have Omnitron have it, but you don't really have the cards to make use of it. I guess you can use a Singularity. That could be good. Would you be willing to play that in your turn? Um, let's see here. That's a card that I have used rarely because I just haven't played enough Omnitron X. Like the Seeker is really good when you can deal damage to lots of targets, a lots of times. Because you have Disruptor Flechettes, you could play Disruptor Flechettes and Singularity on your turn, and like wipe the field. Ah. So, I think you should do that. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right, I'm gonna. Do the motivational charge thing again. And I'll soften up Ashclaw because screw that guy. Yeah, Legacy could get the Seeker, but there are better better heroes to get the Seeker than Legacy. If you want more seeking to be done. So here I would suggest you play a card because you you would probably know what you're doing here. But. So when the target so I just, I'm just rereading the secret here. When a target damages another target that has a damage reducing effect, put this card under that target, they'll damage. Okay, so basically I just need to hit Kargra. Yeah, well, I would actually hit the Andolin first. Because he also has a damage reducing effect. Ah, okay. Yeah, because if you play a card, you can play the card that lets you play a card. <laughs> oh yeah. And then you could play um, Disruptive Flechettes. Disruptive yeah. Flechettes, and then Singularity. Yeah. And so if, if you... Yeah, you don't need to destroy an ongoing card. If you just if you hit the Andolin first, you'll get the Seeker, and then basically destroy everything. Because everything you hit now is going to get a plus two on it. And then you're going to do it again. <laughs> And basically, I only have to kill one thing, and I'm just going to do at least three damage to everything, right? Or I can kill a bunch of things and do lots of damage. Yeah, you can even you can even if you destroy no equipment cards, you'll do two damage to everything because of the plus two. But you could destroy um, like some of your units, or you could you could destroy Danny Boy if you want. Or actually destroy the compound of bow. I'm not going to play that. I'm going to not going to use that now. But like whatever you want, you can pump up the damage as much as you yeah. want. Can we get rid of one of these? Actually, do I have a displaced armory? Yes. I don't. So yeah, I'll hold on my hat. I'm gonna keep those hug goggles. Yeah, I think that that'll be good. That'll be four damage to everything. Right. Yeah. So this is well, the order might turn. matter. Actually, you're going to get the champion. So hit the lower HP guys first. Oh wait, maybe you won't get the champion. How many? Have you destroyed a target yet this turn? We should have destroyed more equipment cards. You would have got the champion. Ah. Yeah, you won't actually destroy these guys. So I don't think the order matters. Yeah, and I can't kill Darkarn. Oh, she gets the Unbreakable. That's fine. Um. <laughs> Do we want to win? Uh, we won't win, but we should flip her. Or we should uh, get her to use up the Unbreakable, I mean. Oh, right. And Chrono Ranger will have that honor. Wonderful. Actually, I always do this in the wrong order. I should play Hunter and Hunted first, and then the other card. Let's rewind. Do this right. So if you play Sudden Contract first, it does one damage. 
and so you're doing less damage than if you play Hunter and Hunter first. Because you want that rider damage to also be increased. Let's just pile these bounties up right on Cargo Warfang. Uh, Janagro says, every time I see that card, I think of Kimmy Schmidt. I do the same thing. Which one? Uh, there's a Netflix show called The Unbreakable Kimmy Schmidt. Yeah, which card? Um, the Unbreakable. Oh, All right. okay. I thought it was like <laughs> some card art that had a picture that reminded you of it or something. No, it's, it's the title. So I could, do, I could do six damage to her right now, or I could take out some of these fools, which is what I'm going to do, and get the other title and rub it in her face. How dare you come to our Insula Primalis and try and spread your ridiculous craziness, Cargra. Because I have Danny Boy that can do three more. That's going to... Look at eight damage. Yeah. Some more titles out there. Kind of the champion! Is the champion! That's gonna make him do irreducible damage. Good night, Cargo Warfang. Because she's not a target, she loses her titles, and these things get destroyed. Because she's not a target, this all happens before we get to win. Are you there? Yes, sir. Can you press choose for oh, me? Oh, sorry. I was trying to get caught up on the chat. I get to draw a card. This is all happening, actually, because Christopher wanted it to end this way. So if there's triggers, then they, they have to wait. They have to happen. Here we go. Victory for the heroes. Special music. Christopher is a hoopy fruit, and he sure knows where his towel is. That he does. Yeah, actually, for those who are mentioning that, if you listen in the arena... You'll hear someone say, I've been coming here since I was a little Beeblebrox. Indeed. All right, new game. We're going to see how big that...